top programs, separated by only 10 miles, Duke's Blue Devils and their rivals, the Tar Heels of North Carolina. 70 years, they've met 178 times. And here on Tobacco Road, their smoke has risen near the top of the nation once again. Duke, a 13-0 start, was the early number one in the country until North Carolina, without injured guard Jeff Lebo, handed the Blue Devils their first loss. Out-rebounding Duke by 17, Carolina prevailed 91-71. Six-foot, 10-inch Scott Williams, a Tar Heel force inside, led with 22 points and 11 rebounds. And consistent Kevin Madden, quick to gobble up loose balls, was there to punch holes in Duke's comeback hopes. The Devils All-American Danny Ferry was not 100%, finished with only 14 points and a disappointing 4 for 12 effort. Olympian J.R. Reed's breakaway and slam provided a bold Carolina exclamation point and a Tar Heel win that gives them a chance today to share another ACC title. Duke plays the role of spoiler. It's the best of college basketball on NBC Sports. Today, Mike Krzyzewski and the 8th-ranked Duke Blue Devils take on the 7th winningest coach of all time, Dean Smith, and the 5th-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. From the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, college basketball is brought to you by New Michelob Dry. One taste and you'll drink it dry. By the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By today's Howard Johnson. We're changing a lot of minds. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. The Dean Smith Center on the campus of the University of North Carolina. This basketball chateau is emotional today. They meet the rival Blue Devils from Duke, and it's senior day here. Steve Bucknall, David May, and Jeff Liebel, graduating seniors under Dean Smith, will play their last home game in front of a crowd of over 21,000, most of them wearing Carolina blue. Hello, everyone, and welcome aboard. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire. As you saw in this final home season game, Carolina with a win will tie North Carolina State for the ACC title. That'll make it 16 times in 22 years if North Carolina wins. For Duke, what do they have going for them? Well, they have two things, Dick. They lost their last two games to Arizona and to Clemson. They don't want to go into the postseason conference tournament with three losses. Plus, in January, North Carolina beat them by 20 points at Cameron. Coach K's upset. They'll come out physical. This game's going to be decided on fouls, and Duke's bench isn't long. One of the reasons is a starter, a la Ab 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 uh, academic problems, and Mike Krzyzewski has disciplined him. He will not play today. He is not in uniform. And that goes against Carolina's deep bench. Well, what's going to happen, Duke is going to have to put pressure on their guards. Snyder and Henderson's going to pick up early. They can't allow Carolina to get down on the blocks with their wide bodies, which is going to be very difficult, Dick. But I'll tell you one thing I think that's going to decide this game. You don't know what I'm going to say now. No, I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> If there's 80 points on the scoreboard and Duke scores them, they're going to win because they're 21 and 8 when they score. 21 and 8 or 21 and 0? 21 and 0 when they score 80 points. They're 0 and 6 when they score less than 80. So you watch that. <laughs> You're a veritable basketball Einstein. We'll be back with this mathematical wizard. We'll see who it'll be today, Duke or North Carolina, and we'll meet the starting lineups in just a moment. Next weekend, and of course, uh, the various matchups between top teams and bottom half teams that will set up the tournament will be decided today. North Carolina State knows it at least has a share of the title, having beaten Wake Forest yesterday in Greensboro in four overtimes. In 36 years of this conference, they've never had a four-overtime game until yesterday, and North Carolina State did that in a rather remarkable fashion. We'll show you one of the key plays later in the game. So a tradition started by Dean Smith some 20 years ago and now copied by many around the conference and the country, starting all seniors. And that means that David May, 
who has scored only four points all season long. A chemistry major. He'll be in medical school next year. Will be one of the Carolina starters. Duke goes with Smith, Ferry, Leitner starting for Abdul Nabi, Phil Henderson, and Quinn Snyder. For Carolina, it's May, Fox, Reed, Bucknall, and Lebo. The under underclassmen are Rick Fox and J.R. Reed. Duke wears blue, Carolina in white, and here we go before over 21,000 in the Dean Dome. Leitner against Fox, and Phil Henderson for Duke off the ferry. Henderson draws Lebo inside. Good pass to Leitner, who is shooting over 70% of his field goal tries, and Duke has the early lead. Lebo draws Snyder in the patented man-for-man -man tough defense of the Blue Devils. That's May with Leitner on him. J.R. draws Smith. Bucknall drives on Henderson and sets up J.R., who is fouled by Danny Ferry. Oh, they're going to call it on Smith on the back side, not on Ferry, so Smith has his first foul. J.R. Reed goes to the line. Referees are going to be blowing early. They're afraid of a very physical game here. So any type of touch foul in the first three or four minutes, you'll hear the whistle blow. JR averaging just over 15 a game, but that's the best average of any Carolina player. But the good news for Dean Smith, and he likes it that way, is he's always coached a team approach. They have six men between 15 and 11 points per game. Reed ties it at two all. Both teams have the same problem. A little bit slower speed in the guard position. Intercepted by Fox. A rare bad pass by Danny Ferry. Lebo has been cold. Still wearing that brace on the left ankle and foot. He had a stress fracture of the foot. Reed working on Ferry. Banks it in. Carolina leads 4-2. to two. Very rare does J.R. play to glass. Snyder inside to Ferry. Back to Snyder. Ferry for three. No, he passes underneath for an easy hoop. Phil Henderson benefits from a great pass from Ferry. Both teams are playing hard man to man. A whistle away from the ball. And the foul that's going to be on number 31. At least the signal was given 31. There's not one on the court. David May. It's David May. Oh, it goes against Carolina. Carolina. Not Duke. So David May trying to screen out, picks up a foul, and that's, his, in essence, a turnover to Duke. It was a, a pick on the weak side, blind pick. You got to allow three feet in the zone for the first time. 2 3, Carolina. Look for the outside shot, obviously. Good pass inside to Leitner, but he loses it. Nice save by Lebo ahead to Fox. Fox to Bucknell, and it's six to four, Carolina. Ferry, his first shot is a little short rebound by May. Here comes Lebo. For three. Reed follows it in. It's eight to four, Carolina. If Duke doesn't get more fiscal under the basket, they're in for a long afternoon. That's how Carolina beat them over at Cameron at Duke in January. Offensive rebounds, getting too many putback baskets. Ferry double teamed inside, gets it to Henderson. He loses it to Fox. Three on three break. Into the secondary break now. Stolen by Snyder. Bucknall to beat. And Snyder has it blocked, but a foul on Bucknall. You saw Steve Bucknall's parents earlier. They're here from London, England, seeing their very first game in America. We talked to the parents, and I asked the dad, do you understand this game? He said, no. <laughs> I, asked, I asked the mom. There, there's the mother on the right there. I said to the mother, I said, what did your son play when he was young? She says, football. 
I said, like we do here? She said, no, soccer football. They call it, they call it in Europe. That's his sister in between. She's over 6'2". Asked her if she was an athlete. Oh, she said, yes. They like everything here but the food. Kind of the way we feel a lot of us about our trips to England. <laughs> Two shots. Now, well, he's a construction uh, worker, contractor, builds private homes. Quinn Snyder. Shooting into the Carolina blue has his first point. David May has come out now, and Scott Williams has replaced him. Snyder has his first two points. It's eight to six. Robert Bricky, 21, is also in for Duke. He replaces uh, John Smith. Henderson and Snyder are playing up on the defensive guards, trying to pull the baseline higher. Oh, steal by Henderson. He pickpocketed Bucknall over Madden with a twist. He misses the shot. Ferry tips it away. It goes to Carolina. Lebo with the Carolina Tar Heels leading 8-6. to six. Oops, he picked up the dribble, but he also was fouled by Phil Henderson. Lebo gave a nice head and shoulders fake. Got Henderson back on his heels, and he had to reach in for the foul. That last time down on that breakaway by Henderson, he got a little bit too fancy, too much French pastry. Put a little bit too much mustard on the hot dog. Clay Buckley, number 45, who will see more action today because of the Abdul Nabi suspension, is in for Carolina, as is uh, Brian Davis. Scott Williams has his first points. And it's 10 to 6, North Carolina. Three and a half minutes have been played. Good pressure defense by the Tar Heels. Overplaying the ball and the angles. And a foul on Ferry for pushing J.R. Reed away from the ball. Could be called either way. It's a push and shove match. It's all according to the angle of the referee. Watch them push and shoving each other. They thought that Ferry backed up that time. Looks like J.R. had something to do with it. Lebo pulls up for the jumper. Buckley rebounds to Snyder. Snyder goes all the way against Reed. Oh, he, stepped stepped in. In. he stepped in. Foul Good call. against J.R. Reed. Paparo is right on top of it. Good call. Foul is on J.R. Reed. His first. Watch him slide in a little bit late. And more and more this year, we've seen that call go against the defending player. I like that. I, for so often, that fainting foul and contact went against the driver. And I think the officials basically, especially here in the ACC, have protected the defender, or the offensive player, rather, and not the defender. So Snyder misses the chance for the three-point play, and North Carolina holds a two-point lead. Four minutes have been played. Well, the ACC, Dick, lost. What value? But no, scores. Assist to JR. That's Four points. A, that's a set play, back door. Fake coming out towards JR, then go baseline. The ACC lost seven of their referees to the NBA. The NBA has gone with three referees this year. They're very pleased with it. Robert Bricky with a jumper. Rebound, Bucknall. And the foul is against Brian Smith of Duke. And with that, we have our first time out. Four and a half minutes have been played, and North Carolina leads by four. Other ranked teams. So you think about the upcoming tournament where you're going to play the creme de la creme. Tar Heels 8 and 3 record is impressive. Duke's only win against the ranked teams, North Carolina State, they're 1 and 4. It's 12 to 8. Tar Heels with the ball after the foul. King Wright, 21, has come into the game for the first time for Carolina. He triggers the inbounds pass. Also in for the first time, Pete Chilcutt, 32. Lebo with a drive and the foul from behind on Ricky of Duke. That'll be team foul number five on the Devils. Three have been called against Carolina. Ricky made a nice move that time. He caught the arm of Lebo. Ricky might be the best athlete on the Duke team. And Lebo certainly the best free throw shooter for Carolina. He's looking for his 31st in a row. He's made 31 straight now. 
couple years ago, he had a 33 shot string from the charity. He's 32 in a row. Still playing out of position. He's a off guard, not a point guard. Trap up court. No problem. Round the horn for an outside shot. And it goes two. It goes two. Two back for two, and he hits it just oh. inside the line. Just into the game, Greg Kubek cuts Carolina's lead to 14-10. He's instant offense. He's out shooting. Likes range. Got a walk there. Traveling. Rice shuffling his feet. Well, one of the reasons the man should have went baseline, back door, play was set. His teammate didn't react, created the walk. Anderson got away with a little elbow. Inside to Ferry, who's yet to score. Rebound, Madden, who's in. Kevin Madden, 22. Dean Smith will play eight men and interchange them on a very regular basis. It is an eight-man team. Duke's doing a great job defensively on the guards. This has been Duke's problem most of the year. Ooh, near steal by Bricky. Lebo pulls up and way short. And a pushing foul on Scott Williams of North Carolina, his first. Scott Williams, a lot of times, defensively and offensively off the board, he moves his body up and underneath the opponent, which creates a, a lot of personal fouls on him through the year. He's had a good season, averaging 11 a game and leads in rebounds with seven. Here's the trap, the famed Carolina trap. They break it, and Kubek had the open shot, didn't take it. Very. Well, cut come out quite fast, and... Kukut has a couple inches to spare on it. Lob inside to Leitner. He feeds Ferry. Nice inside work. Leitner to Ferry. And Duke pulls within two. Always remember, gang, interior passing should be done with a bounce. Kevin Madden. He banks it in. Madden with his first points. He's averaging 15 a game. Duke has to shoot more from the outside. Back out again. Ferry to Leitner. Leitner forcing a pass. Stolen by Chilcutt. Stolen right back by Henderson of Duke. Nice move, but he misses everything. And Williams has it. He forced that one. That's twice now for Henderson. He loses his body control by too much hang time. Chilcutt, tough luck as it rolls out. Kubek goes the other way. Two on two. Not there. Catch a trail from the outside. Around the Ferry. Duke trails by four, 16 to 12. We played seven minutes. Let it go. Three-pointer for Ferry. Williams has the rebound. He's warmed up for the NBA. That was NBA range. Rice inside to Madden. He's short. Rebound to Leighton. If this was Cameron, we'd be hearing air ball, air ball. And almost everywhere else except here in North Carolina. Probably the best mannered home fans in the country, North Carolina. Ricky misses, and Chilcutt has the rebound. Dick, you can always have good manners when you're winning. <laughs> Boy, they have won. Have they ever here in this program. Again, they're creating problems by putting pressure on the guards. Scott Williams around Leitner. Big shot, big. Williams has four. Carolina back on top by a half dozen. 12 minutes to go, first half. I try Kubek again. He hit one for one from out town. Foul on Madden trying to force his way through a pick by Ferry. First foul on Madden. There's five personal fouls on Duke, and there's four on Carolina. How do you pronounce uh, that coach over there of, of Duke's name? Have you, have you worked that Mike. Out? Mike, what's his last name? Mr. K. Come on, what's his name? <laughs> Kaczewski. But Polish people never pronounce the K. <laughs> okay. You know what? You may be right. 11.48 left in the first half. Take the easy one. Dean Smith. I don't know if he's the easy one. They're really uh, eyeball to eyeball. Mike has given Dean more of a 
uh, 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 challenge than any other coach. Oh, no foul here. This was no foul. I agree with Madden. He didn't foul him. <laughs> Non-contact sport. <laughs> he beat on him. 18 to 12, the score. North Carolina leading. Clay Buckley, number 45, back in for Duke. So is Snyder with the ball. Lob to Ferry. Nice, nice. pass to Smith. Smith. Nice. Smith. Duke extended Carolina's defense that time, which opened up underneath. That was a set play. Finished off by an excellent pass from Danny. Very consistent in his career over the 100 assist mark. These years will be known as Duke as the Ferry years. Rice inside the read, and they tie him up. The arrow points for North Carolina. Let's go back to Danny Ferry and that fine pass by the big man. It's automatic. He's doubled down low. Nice move by Henderson into the open spot. The two men are on you. Somebody's free. Ferry's number two on the team in assists with 131 coming in. Second to Flynn Snyder. Oh, almost stolen by Buckley. He ties it up. So Duke has the arrow pointing toward Durham. Diala Abdul Nabi in his suit across the way. I asked him before the game, I said, hey, Ayala, baby, how are you going to do with the exams this week? He says, I'm going to ace them. <laughs> so he'll be back for the tournament. Told me he's definitely going to ace the exam. Well, he got the message. Ferry hits that That's solid baseline there. jumper, and it's back to a two point game. Approaching the midpoint of this first 20 minute period. Bucknall around Henderson. It won't fall. Ferry rebounds. Clears John Onion Smith. Inside. No one's on Buckley, and he ties it up. Play Buckley. Happens every now and then when you alternate defenses as much as North Carolina alternates. Now the game tied for only the second, third time now. Tied at two and tied at four. Then Carolina maintained the lead. Biggest lead, six. Reed jamming his way inside. They're going to call the foul on Buckley. Reed makes a mistake that he has to correct sooner or later in his career. When he gets the ball, he drops it below his waist. Now, when you're six foot ten, you drop that ball below your waist. There's too many quick little guards are going to steal it on you. Think Reed will be back for his senior year, Coach? I don't know. I I think that uh, Carolina's up tempo their game, and I don't think that Reed is um, uh, as much a dominating star as he has been in the first two years. So you're saying you think he will go? I'm not sure. I see. Both his parents are, are highly educated. They believe in education, but that's going to be a call. Um, after the season, they'll meet with Dean Smith. What has to be, has to be. Snyder's pass is batted away. And then Duke. Perry goes for it, and the call is what? I would, I, I think that's a good call. It wasn't an intentional foul. What happened is that when Danny Ferry went, he went down to the ground, which tripped up the North Carolina guy. And there the was no was harm, no foul. The ball belongs to Carolina. Good call. Speaking of Dick Paparo before the game, I said to Dick, I said, hey, Dick, when do you ever get an easy game? He says, I want a game when Liberty plays against Clemson or when Georgetown plays against Shenandoah. I want one of these 70-point games. When you see Dick Paparo assigned to a ball game, that game is a cliffhanger, a heat rash, a wet palm game. Well, he is one of the game's very best officials, working on the near side. 2018, North Carolina in front. Picking down low. Oh, boy, did he hit him. Buckley gets the foul, and J.R. Reed goes down. Caught J.R. right below the chin that time. Buckley's a little bit more rugged than I thought. His dad was a great player at Duke back in the 60s, Jay Buckley. Here it comes, a blindside pick. There it is, an overreaction by J.R. Now, J.R., nobody can knock you down. When people bounce into you, J.R., they vibrate. <laughs> vibrate and reverberate. J.R. Reed now at the free throw line as we go into the bonus situation for the first time. Carolina's committed five fouls, the seventh now on Duke. Reed looks for his seventh point. Anderson gets the rebound. 
No concentration off the back rim. What's the matter, JR? Better than let your hair grow a little bit. Ooh, Fox nearly steals. Smith has Ooh, it nice taken hand. away. Ferry gets the loose ball. And now it's Bricky. He misses. Out of it comes oh. Scott Williams. Nice hands that time by Lebo. Rick Fox. And a foul on Smith. Fox, second. Fox wanted to drive the baseline. That's his avenue to paradise. Anytime Fox can on that baseline, it's a usually score. Rick Fox goes to the line for North Carolina. Has not scored. Grew up in the Bahamas and South Nassau in the 10th grade. Is this injury given a rest? In the 10th grade, Fox said, other than shooting at a backboard and a hoop, he said, I'd never played a basketball game. He uh, entertained a college team from Grace, Indiana, who gave a clinic in the Bahamas. They invited him to come to Warsaw, Indiana family, learn the game in Hoosier State. We talk about a quick study. He's become, I think, one of the better young players in the country, one of the unknowns, but this young guy is a player. He's a handsome fellow. I was, I was speaking to the SID before the game. I said, gee, he's handsome. He said, he's coming out of the locker room one day, and he heard all this screaming by these girls, and he thought it was for J.R. Reed. It was a Fox. 22-18, <laughs> Fox hits his first two free throws. SID means sports information director. Yeah, the best friends of the broadcasters and writers. The one for one, Kubek, put it up. Get around to him. Leitner takes the shot. Rebound, Lebo, and it squirts to number 40, Hubert Davis, in the game for the first time. Scott Williams inside, and it's knocked away by Kubek, controlled by Reed. Carolina getting all the loose balls. Reed trickles it in. They are leads all scores with eight. See what happens when you catch the front of the rim. You get a break. Rick Fox got a piece of the wrist. There's Fox, whose mother was on the Canadian Olympic team in 1964, a high jumper. So he inherits those leaping skills from his high jumping mom. Pete Chilcutt returns for Carolina. Scott Williams goes out. Now both teams are in the one-on-one -on -one for the rest of the half. It's eight minutes and 17 seconds. I told you if you allowed a foul. Refs are trying to keep control, not make this a physical game. Henderson hits the 10-footer. It's 24-20. Henderson has four. They're laying off Davis. Fox with a nice move inside. He's an athlete. Four points for him. Mr. Inside and outside. Loose ball goes to Kubek. It was knocked away from Ferry, and Greg Kubek has four. It's a four-point North Carolina lead. Fox again with a move. Ball away isn't there. Ferry clears to Henderson. Traveling is the ball against Henderson. Henderson's got to let his teammates help him. When he gets the ball, he extends it too much, Dick. He doesn't let his teammates come in and help him. Now, that's a third kind of difficult turnover he created so far. Timeout with seven minutes and 29 seconds left in this opening half. North Carolina Middle was coached by the man who invented the game. Krzyzewski coached by Knight at Army, and Knight was coached by Fred Taylor who won the national championship at Ohio State. And there's one of the greats, Hank Iba. Third winningest coach all time, won the NCAA twice at Oklahoma State. Here a guest of North Carolina, Dick Hart, administrative assistant under Dean Smith, a good friend. Of course, he was a coach at Kansas as well. Again, Jeff. Duke picking up early in the guard position. Jeff Denny, number three, is in the game for the first time. For Caroline stolen by Ferry. He has Snyder alone up court. And Snyder misses the layup. Oh, and that was won't count. count. Basket interference. The ball was inside the rim. Kubek stuck his hand in the cookie jar and no basket. It remains 26-22 North Carolina. Here it is. Watch the ball stays inside the rim. It dances around. It waited another split second for the want of a nail. 
Nice, nice pass to Denny, and he misses the layup. <laughs> so Snyder misses an easy one at the Duke end, and Jeff Denny misses for Carolina. Coaches are getting you the layups. You're not making them. Barry, another interior pass. The basket is good and a foul. Boy, that Barry, not only does he pass well, when he passes, he sets up two. The extension of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Yeah, Larry Bird, he said, is his role model. Who were an extension of Bob Cousy, Dutch Garfinkel, and Dick McGuire, my brother. You talk about trees. I am now talking about passing trees. The most beautiful thing in basketball is the pass. Quick. Yeah. Quick decision and a clean pass will set up Henderson for a sixth point. Here's Henderson with a chance to pull Duke within one point. It's 26-25. 6.44 to go in the half. Rules of the game will feature screens and picks. And we've got the semifinals of that Foot Locker Slam Fest for you. Matt Biondi goes against Conley. That's his favorite shot, the turnaround jumper. He has 10. Trap is not bothering Duke. Ooh, almost too good a pass. He handcuffed Leitner. That was a catchable ball, but it was thrown hard, and Leitner was surprised. A little bit too hard for Leitner to handle. Look more for the back door. Well, traveling on JR with an extra step as he went up for the shot. Scott Williams will return for North Carolina. And Reed goes out. I think JR Reed could see Scott Williams sitting over there, knew he was coming out. JR figured he's on a on a roll here. He's on a run. He made a great slow move before in that last basket. So you know when your stuff is over there in the bench, if I touch it again, I'm letting it fly. Maybe I can change the coach's mind. No, don't change teams, my head's computer. Another pass inside. Assist to Ferry. Basket to Kubek. 28-27 North Carolina leads. Why do I sense that J.R. Reed, with his great freshman year, now as a junior, isn't having that great a season that he hasn't developed into the great, great player it appeared he would be, or is that just Well, my I eyes? think because Bucknall and Madden are more down on the, on the blocks. It doesn't give J.R. Reed that much time, and also an up-tempo offense more than usual by North Carolina. Yeah, they're averaging 91 a game. They really are up -tempo. A stop in the first points of the game to Pete Chilcutt. Also got to remember with J.R. that he was out the first nine games of the season. Had a, his left foot a, a screw put in to fix the break. He went nine long months at the Olympics. And you're knocking 256 pounds for nine months on the foot. Something's going to give. Actually, it was more than nine because you've got to count last season, too. His sophomore year, then all the Olympic training, then into this year. It's you know, almost a full year, isn't it? Play monthly. Don't here's get me a shocker. Into the Olympics. I am not going to even start. But here's a shocker. Carolina made tie for the conference title and didn't place anyone on the All-State ACC first team or second team. Oh, yeah, uh, JR. Yeah, that's right. JR made the third team. They did get a second team. But Reed made third team. There's the first team. Ferry and Hammonds with three state players, Monroe, Porciani, and Chucky Brown. Let me tell you about that North Carolina State team. If Jimmy V goes with three guard offense and moves in wings, they could be a factor in the NCAA. And but the key to that club is how how it has to have a good run in the NCAA. You want him to go with three guards. No coaching uh, from I, the sideline. Well, I, I personally think the college ball is meant to be Carolina with a turnover, and Duke. The Devils have led only a 2 0 at the start. They have a chance to regain that lead with 4.50 to go in the half. Go back inside to Ferry. Ferry, the oh, pass to Buckley, and he's putting on a clinic. Danny Ferry with a pass. Duke leads 31 30. And a foul on Phil Henderson, or is it Kubek? Henderson reached in. A nice 360 move that time by Bucknall. This is an excellent pass by Ferry. As he cuts down the middle, piece of cake. Well, you better be ready and alert, because Ferry not only gets you the ball, it's there in a hurry. 
Magic does the same thing. At the line, Jeff Lebo looking for his 33rd free throw. Successful free throw. No, he tried to slip in there. <laughs> no, Buck Noll goes to the line and it didn't work. But no, it's not a bad free throw shooter. He's hitting 76% but misses the front end of a one and one. Curry got a little push that time. Inside to Ferry. Against Reed. Blocked by Williams. His 43rd of the season. He leads Carolina. Back to Williams. Gets his own rebound and a whistle. Now Williams, who blocked it at the other end, goes to the free throw line. Buckley's third foul. Williams leads his man and comes over and gets all leather. Scott Williams gets two shots. One of the things I think that Carolina doesn't do this year, they did other years, they don't kick that ball out for the three-point shot as often as they used to. Lebo's had a subpar shooting year. He's hitting only around 42% overall. Williams now has five points and ties the game at 31. Robert Rickey, Robert Rickey returns for Clay Buckley. Buckley rested with three fouls. 42, 42. Scott Williams puts Carolina back on top. Just over four minutes to go in this first half. Knight is a dog with the ball there. He's from the Seattle area. He'd love to go out there for the fight in Seattle. Larry, just to show you how versatile he is, goes outside and hits the tray. And Duke leads by two. There's that spinning move by Bucknall. is short. And a foul on Williams. Boy, it's going to be tough to all the Williams. coaches and sportscasters, sports writers voting for the various awards. John Wooden Award, College Player of the Year, the Nation, the various All-Americas. Boy, it's a tough call this year. What do you think the odds are in JR not making the all-conference team in the ACC and being in the hunt for the MVP of the best ball player in the country? And would be, if he goes pro, would be... One of the top picks. Uh, he would go in the top five in the lottery. I, I would think he'd go somewhere around fourth or fifth. I think he'd bump Hammonds down a notch. Down a notch. I still think number one would be Ellison. Number two would be Ferry. Number three would be Stacy King. Um, Ricky misses the second one. It remains 35 and 32. Williams with a rebound. Well, what you're saying is incredible. Here's a man in Bates' third team all conference who could be the fifth pick right in the NBA draft. Oh, he definitely comes out with the fifth pick. It's not better. Fox misses the board, and Ferry rebounds. Oops, and throws it away. And with it, we'll have a timeout. 3.32 remaining in the first half. The Blue Devils from Durham leading the Carolina Tar Heels 35-32. Card, you got that statistic has to grab your attention. When Duke scores 80, they've won every game this year. When they've scored in the 70s, six times, they're 0 and 6. Let's see if it holds up today against their rivals from North Carolina. It's Carolina's ball. We have three and a half minutes to play in this opening half. I still think that Duke will get in foul trouble, and that will decide the game. Lebo pulls up for three and ties it at 35. That's five points for Lebo. He's four from 1,500 in his fine career. Kubek answers from the other side. No, and foul on Williams. He was in on the back of Leitner. And Leitner comes up holding his shoulder. Third foul on Scott Williams. Will you come in recognizing that was not Williams a good foul? Because you're picking up your third. Dean's going to have to sit him down. Kevin Madden will return for North Carolina replacing Williams. Here he goes. I didn't Scott touch Williams. him, coach. Tell the coach he didn't touch him. Christian Leitner. Bill Guthrie, just 22 yeah. years sitting there, said, you touched him. There's Christian Leitner. We saw him against the free throw line with a second left against Arizona. Chance to tie last Sunday at the Meadowlands. He misses the free throw, and with three to go, tied at 35, Carolina goes to the attack. Looking for the back door, they're extending. Oh, 
pass, and it's knocked away by Leitner. Picked up. Ricky. Good portion over 20 turnovers a game on the average. That's as good as a missed shot. Ferry. Mm, boy, that was all velvet. All silky. So wow. they have to go and Duke's Ferry leads all scores with 11. Not enough room in between the basket and the man that time, JR. Leitner with the interception, Ferry at the other end. Now, Kubek travels. Sloan getting the ball on the floor. I thought reading Krzyzewski's lips, he looked at Ferry and yelled, take it to the hole against Reed. He didn't want him to pass it off to Kubek. One of the things that Coach K and Duke is worried about, if they lose today, they open up their conference tournament next week against Georgia Tech at the Omni with three losses in a row going in. Good balance in the ACC. Clemson gets two big scalps this week. Reed inside. Ties it at 37. 12 for JR. Can't let JR get the ball with his back to the basket down low. Clemson beat Georgia Tech and earlier in the week defeated Duke. Inside to Kubek. Good fake by Greg Kubek to free himself for his eighth point. Main thing he did was kept his pivot foot down. Bucknall on the baseline. Come on, Jeff, look for your shot. Okay. Oh. Ricky has it for Duke. 115 to go. And Duke with the ball and a two-point advantage. Got to get the 40, Duke. If you want to win, you got to score 80 points. Leitner has it stolen away by Lebo, the little man inside. In the final minute, Lebo to Fox. Saved by Bricky. Good play by Robert Bricky. And now about six seconds difference between the game clock and shot clock. He'll play it down, Dick, to the foul. Oh, and a good steal there. They should play it down. Go back inside. There's a little coach club. Kubik had a chance to put it up, spread it out. Coach Case it, spread it out there, to spread out. That's the game clock. Shot clock is at 21, 20, 19, 18. Well, remember, the five count is only if you can dribble now for five seconds. Now, if he pulls up the dribble, pull it up. Now you have another five seconds. Ricky with seven seconds hits it. <laughs> Ten seconds on the game clock. This is the biggest Duke lead, four points. Well, no, they'll get it up. Nice. Scores at the buzzer. It counts. Oh, Bucknall on senior day. Final home game for these three graduating seniors. Hits the banker. And we've got ourselves a game that has been typical of an incredibly tight season in the Atlantic Coast Conference at the intermission. Duke 41, North Carolina 39. Stay tuned for the rules of the game. Our slam dunk semifinals and other scores with the athletes, the academicians. And there's the academic All-America team for 89, and it's a good one. Alec Kessler of Georgia, and that's his great point average. That's your uh, point average for life, not just for a basketball season. Brian Quinette of Washington State, Michael Smith of BYU, Scott Hafner of Evansville averaging 24 a game, and Joe Hillman of Indiana. Congratulations to those first team academic All-Americas. And uh, a couple others on the second team that are interesting names. One involved in this game. 51-46, Duke leading. Carolina with the ball. A constant movement away from the ball in Dean Smith's Carolina offense. Cut, 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 pick and cut. Plus your spacing. Bucknall for three. You let him set for that shot. He's tough. He likes that both feet set. And cuts a one seven point Duke lead down to two. And the crowd right back in this game. Fox takes it away. With Reed. Fox way off the mark. Snyder. To Bricky. Whoa, my ego upstairs. But he walked. And I also think he charged. But he really climbed. That's Skywalker. 
I say Bricky was at least 18 inches above the tee, two feet above the rim here. What? I didn't see the walk, frankly. I thought that was legit. Boy, did he fly. Bucknall inside and a foul. And now the fouls become so very important. That is the sixth team foul on Duke. Carolina zero. And that's why Krzyzewski carries that uh, critical pose. He is not at all happy. He knows that and will remind certainly officials as they go by his bench of that statistic. Well, what happens is the bodies on Carolina are so big that you've got to foul. As I said earlier in the program, I think the game will be decided with Duke getting into foul trouble. Smith picks up his third foul. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player for each team. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. Bucknall and his parents and uh, the sister in between mom and dad from London, they're getting in the college spirit here in Chapel Hill. Their first visit to America. Both of them, the dad was there for his high school graduation at Governor Summer Academy in Massachusetts. Game even at 51 on Bucknall's 12th and 13th points. Good catch by Kubek to make the basket. Anytime Carolina puts pressure on you, the man on the weak side of the court is free. So if you just commit to the air and throw to the weak side. But Snyder did that time. Kubek was in the right spot. JR working on the freshman Leitner. It's going up. He forced that one and Leitner rebound. And he's fouled by Williams, a foolish foul, the fourth on Scott Williams. The first on Carolina in the second half, and we play six minutes and 16 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised to see not only Williams come out, but Jr. I think that last move he made was too individual for Dean Smith. Let's see if I'm right. Dean Smith, what a record. Of all his remarkable rem records, the one I think is most impressive, the last eight years in a row, his teams have made it to the final 16. Eight straight years. I know the guy so long, I could know that move. J.R. should have taken that shot, and J.R. now is sitting on the bench. Alley-oop! And Rick Fox gets a piece of Ricky on the alley-oop. Second on Fox. J.R. knew that he shouldn't have taken oh, that oh, shot because he was Fox. also using peripheral vision second. looking over there at the bench. Second. I used to always tell my ball players, hey, when you do something wrong, don't look at me because you know I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're about to come out. <laughs> come out to Pine City for a while. Robert Bricky, he's had his troubles at the free throw line. Just 55 percent on the year. Got to get confidence, son. Hard to get. It's easy for us to talk about it. Just think positive. Think a piece of cake. Think a, a malted milk. An ice cream sundae. Chocolate syrup. What are you saying? Think fat? <laughs> think calories. 53-51 as Bricky misses two. And Carolina goes for the tie. It's into Madden. He gets it back. And ties it. Great play by Madden. Hard nose play inside. Staying with the ball. He's a tough 6 4 competitor. He's constantly playing against men much taller. Boy, it can get noisy in here. Bad pass. Too much hesitancy on Snyder. You got to take that shot, Quinn. Nice play by Lebo that time. He created the foul on Leitner. They put his body in front of him. The big guy couldn't change his direction. And Leitner took the bait. He didn't stop. He kept trailing, and Lebo finally got him. Corciani does that so well for North Carolina State. Well, each fella's father was a high school coach. So just under 13 minutes to go in North Carolina down early in the second half by seven now has their best free throw shooter all time the best North Carolina free throw shooter if you will Jeff Lebo at the line looking for his 33rd in a row doesn't score like he used to because his first two years he played with Kenny Smith and what a difference dramatic difference that makes he was a better much better than 50 percent shooter as a freshman and sophomore Smith leaves in the last two years he's in the low 40. Well it's because he also had to move over to the point position and the point position creates other problems with, with shooters. He's a number two guard not a number one guard. 
Lebo with his 33rd and 34th consecutive free throws gives Carolina the lead. the ball inside. Ferry tries to help out. She'll cut alone, and that caps a 13-2 run for North Carolina, and they've regained the lead at 57-53. And the crowd, 21,444, absolutely loves it. Nice inbound set that time. Too much hands in there on Rice. His first team fourth foul. That was on team Rice. This is the third. Jump, 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 jump. With the third team foul. Of course, uh, Carolina's already in the bonus. And we've still got more than 12 minutes left in the second half. Jay Buckley returns. The play Buckley returns for Duke. He has three fouls. Kubek should move to the outside for three-point shot. Lebo. And what a save by Quinn Snyder. Ferry scores, but thank uh, that two points to Snyder's hustle. 57-55, Carolina. Whistle away from the ball. Foul on Kubek. Kubek's a little taller than Madden, but he can't handle Madden. Madden's just got that mature body. Now Madden came out of high school, highly regarded one of the top ten players in the country, and then had his problems settling in in Carolina. He had academic problems, and Dean Smith redshirted him for a year, which is something he rarely does. Now he's matured as a junior, and he's about mature body, 230 pounds in that 6'4 frame. And he is tough. He likes it inside with the tall trees. Yeah, he likes the pump and the grinding. He makes strong moves down low. Averaging 15 a game, he's a 64% shooter from the line. That's his fifth point. Dalton, Virginia, Robert E. Lee High School. Game's 58-55. Cole Henderson with the rebound. Schneider brings it up. A little out of control, and Fox with a reach-in foul. His second. That was the fourth team foul in Carolina. Carolina trying to pick up the tempo by pushing more defensively. Make that Fox's third foul to three now on Rick Fox. Duke, three points away from a tie. Fox deflects it. Bucknall for three. And Snyder with the rebound. They had a three-on-one break, and Bucknall pulled up for a three-pointer. Good play. Both his teammates went for inside position. Henderson inside over Madden. 58-57. Phil Henderson has nine. Well, fans around the country, what a day of college basketball. Overtime, two top teams in the Big East. Syracuse beats Georgetown. Here, King Rice of North Carolina can hit. Henderson gets the rebound. And here are the two top-rated teams of the ACC. Fifth-ranked Carolina and eighth-ranked Duke battling. And it's a one-point game, 11 minutes to go. And Henderson can't hit. He hit the underside of the board. Fox goes out, three on two. Tough shot to make. Momentum is carrying you towards the basket. When you're stopping that play, you've got to take a 1,000 and one count to get your balance. Yeah, isn't that tough to do? You know they're all coming up from behind you. <laughs> Well, Rick Fox, you just when you stop like that from 15 feet, I'll take a thousand and one and square and go up and bottom it out. Rick Fox, two more years here for Dean Smith. 
Duke is in the zone. Look for an outside shot. I'll take that, Jeff. JR, that jump. Oh, oh line line drive. Wow, that was a close line. 16 points for JR. Ten and a half minutes to go. Carolina by three, and it's last touch by North Carolina. Let's go back to JR. Watch the trajectory of the ball. He almost shoots this ball down rather than up. See how low it is? <laughs> that is, he was downward all the way. <laughs> oh, is that a difficult shot? I don't think, J.R., you're going to cut more hair off the back of your head. I like your line. Just imagine what he'd say if his dad made him get that haircut. Snyder misses from outside. Lebo ahead to Bucknall. Halfway mark, 10 minutes to go. 2 3 zone. They double on JR down low. I think they got to shoot from the outside. Madden underneath the read. He scores and he is fouled. Give credit to the pass. you see committing the foul his fourth and as you predicted coach the foul difficulties for Duke are going to play a very big role in this one especially with Allah sitting out will join us late Allah Abdul Nabi a starter sitting out his third game Mike Krzyzewski disciplining that big guy 6'10 for academic reasons Reed has a chance for a three-point play but settles for the two has 18 in the game Biggest Carolina lead with six in the first half, and there's a turnover as Tricky throws it away. Duke owned a seven-point lead here in the second half, only to see Carolina take charge of the game. Spread it out. Putting the wide bodies into action. Fox likes that baseline. Madden likes underneath. There's Madden. And Leitner, that will... Or is that Smith? No, it's Henderson that reached in. Henderson got the foul. That'll be his four. So Leitner has four. Smith has four. This is one of the reasons Dick why Coach K has gone to the zone. Henderson goes out with uh, four fouls. Leitner. No, it's Leitner that he'll take out. Duke really works with a seven-man rotation. To take on North Carolina, you got to work with about a nine-man rotation, and you got to have some hope. They do have some heavy bodies. Those are the, the through hawks of the ACC. That's why if I was playing North Carolina, I wouldn't worry about the guards penetrating because they can't penetrate any place because their teammates take up so much space underneath. So I overplay the guards. Matt now, if he makes this one, will give Carolina its biggest lead, seven points. Barry rebounds for Duke. And foolish, foolish. J.R. Reed with a foul. He knew it. He knew it, yep. Third on J.R. Reed. J.R. Reed loves playing against this other All-American right there, Danny Ferry. J.R. gets all pumped up. Dean will take him out, pull him off. Well, they're going to call that a technical oh, foul, an intentional foul. So it will be two shots then. And the ball. Robert Brady on the line. He makes one out of two. He's done a good job. Oh, he got it. Could be a key play in this game. Let's mark it with Carolina leading by six. And Reed committing the foul. There's one point, and now Duke will get the ball at the other end. The reason I said that, Ricky, is not a good foul shooter. And Coach K says to himself, just like I do, I did when I was coaching, make one out of two and not kiss you. <laughs> but after you made the first one, then you want the second one. It's human nature. Good defense by Carolina Snyder, barely getting the inbound fast. It's broken. The odds are right. Henderson. 
Ooh, tough banker. Off the glass from eight feet on 11 points for Henderson. 63-60. Put pressure up court. You live by the sword. You die by the sword. Plenty of time to go. 8.54. McNall leaning in. And scores. Wow. And the foul is on Snyder. Looked like Snyder might have had defensive position that time. It was a great shot by Bucknall. Watch how he leans in, Bucknall. Here. That was one for mom and dad and sister too. Second foul on Snyder. Replaces Kevin Madden. Madden goes out. Rick Fox returns to North Carolina. Well, Buck Nall is a stay. And the real compliment starting about the middle of last year, when things are tough, with late in the going, Buck Nall is on the floor for North Carolina. 66-60, 8.45 to go. Turnover. I was watching Madden out there, Dick. I think he hurt his right arm. We'll see when he comes back in. Lebo. Beautiful. Beautiful. That should be a timeout call right there. Let's see. Biggest lead of the game, and that's his 1,500th career point for Jeff Lebo. Sixth guard in Carolina history in scoring. Smith can't hit. Goes to Carolina Lebo. For three. Oh, that could have been a killer to Duke. Look at that Fox scrap away, and finally Ricky comes up with it. Coach K calls play three. Let's see what it is. Double stack on the, on the foul line extended. Kick it back out. Let it go. Henderson for three. Just not dropping for Duke. They've hit a cold spot. And Carolina down by seven at 51-44. Now leads by eight at 68-60. Fox. Williams with a putback. You've got to call a timeout here. Got to. I can't be wrong twice in a row. A 26 to 9 run for North Carolina. 7.22 to go. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Opening up a 10-point lead, Bill Guthridge, 22 years he's been on the bench next to Dean Smith. I mean, that's really a record. Well, I think, I hope they don't leave for 10 years from now. When they leave, they'll leave together. I think it's almost like uh, the Pharaohs, when, they, when the Pharaoh left, his right man, right arm man left with them. He's been offered more head coaching jobs than any other assistant coach in the business. He's also, Dick, been to eight NCAA Final Four. Six with Dean, one as a ball player, and one with uh, Tex Winter at Kansas State when he's an assistant there. And also on the bench you see Bill Ford, the all-time scorer in North Carolina history. He took the spot left when Roy Williams was nominated as the new Kansas coach. He was the one that made the four corners go during the 70s. Duke now, plenty of time, but they've fallen by 10 to North Carolina's attack. Kubek got to put one up there. Nice move by Williams defensively. Snyder hits a big, big three. three points for Snyder. Nine points for Snyder. He made the second team academic All-America. collision with Madden Ferry <laughs> really went down. That wasn't a fake. He was really knocked off his feet. They talk about the academic all emerge There's something that always bothers me. In the income producing sports, predominantly football and basketball, you minor sports athletes now and then come up to them and say thank you. They create the money for all your travel. They create the money for your scholarship. So why don't go up to these guys and girls and say thank you. Thank you for creating the money that I got a scholarship. Snyder Trying to get a thank you, and Leighton with a good rebound, and Scott Williams and Bucknall were on him. We'll see where the foul goes. These student athletes don't see any of that money. The money's put into the program. 
it wasn't a bad idea. Give a pat in the back. Walk up to Jeff Lebo this week and say, hey, Jeff, thanks for letting us go down to Florida this year with Alf team. Your point is really well taken. That's Ten points for Williams, who has fouled out. That has plagued him throughout his career here. Five fouls. J.R. Reed returns. One of the reasons he picks up fouls, if he has a problem, Williams, he has foot movement problems. He has to, he has to develop his legs more. Snyder, who hit the three, trying to drive for two more, and it's knocked away out of bounds. That should have been a whistle. You see on that uh, second team, Academic All America, kid from Maine, Dean Smith. How do you ever get away from Chapel Hill? He's a fine player oh, and an outstanding student. They're the Black Bears up there, that's their nickname. Snyder waits to balance the floor. Another three. You can't let him shoot after he makes one like that. You fell asleep, Pa Hill. Same spot, same result. So six points for Snyder to cut that 10-point lead in a hurry to four. Bucknall dribbles it around the rim, and Leitner pulls it down. Look at Bucknall all over him. Oh, he's a tough defender. Snyder just does handle the pass. Now they got three shooting guards out there to count Kobeck, Kubek as a shooting guard. And Ferry cuts it to two Ferry. points. So eight quick points for Duke from 70 to 60 to 70 to 68. 19 now for Ferry to lead Duke. It's JR time. Oh. Ferry knocks it away. <laughs> Henderson. Kick it over, Phil. Kick it over. Oh, Phil, baby. He had Ferry wide open on the other wing. For an easy two, but he wanted it himself. Well, he had to kick it over because you're not in the one-on-one -on -one yet. They had one more foul to give. Now we're in the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. And whether we have a timeout, five minutes and 22 seconds left, and Duke has made it interesting again at the line with a chance to tie. Georgia Tech trails. Brown makes a free throw. Carolina leads by two. Inbounds pass stolen by Dennis Scott. Seconds run out. Scott a three. And they beat Bobby Kremen's team. What a rally. Beats North Carolina. It has been some week. And the Carolina still had a chance. Fox very nearly got the three at the other end. And the Thriller Dome lives up to its name. In the meantime, in the ACC, a team that hasn't gotten a lot of national exposure but could finish third in the league is the University of Virginia. They've had their share of wins. They've had a fine season for Terry Holland. Clemson had a couple of big wins again this week. Terry Holland has solved whatever health problems he had, and uh, he got them back on their afterburner. Duke has not shot free throws well today, and Henderson misses the front end. Had a chance to tie it. It remains 70 to 68 with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. No, power move, short on the shot. Leitner has another rebound. Snyder with the ball is key. This comeback from 10 points down. They got four outside shooters in there. Look, Kubek on the backside, blocked by Madden. What a play. Lebo can't hit the three. Reed over Kubek with a rebound. Kubek. Give Jeff Lebo credit. He kept the ball alive on the right side. Fox stayed in there. Well, that's a big goal. Six points now for Fox. And Krzyzewski off his feet, barking for a foul. Got to shoot from the outside. Kubek takes it inside. 72 to 70. Kubek with a dozen. Fox. Foul by Leitner. And that'll be all for Christian Leitner, the 6'10 freshman. He reached in, Coach Mike. An obvious foul. Uh, Leitner leads with four points, but he has been a factor on the boards. He's done a good job rebounding. They haven't told him he's leaving yet. He knows he has five. Eight rebounds for Leitner. You're going to have to go to Bricky, I think, Coach Mike. So far, Krzyzewski has not made the substitution. And now, nods to Robert Brickey. 
Again, he's without Ala Abdullabi, who's in soup at the far end of the bench. He's been suspended because of problems in attending class and the message sent by Krzyzewski. You go back to class, you get your grades, or you don't play. As he told me, I said earlier, he said he's going to ace the exams this week. No problem. He'll be here for the postseason tournament. Which is going to be played at the Omni next week in Atlanta. And we'll have the finals for you next Sunday. Fox hits one out of two. Carolina by three, 73 70, four minutes to go. Drew Fox is going to gamble on the steal. That leaves Henderson open. And the foul from behind on Fox. On top of the head, he hit him. Foul is on Rick Fox. His fourth. His fourth foul. In comes Steve, Steve McNall for Fox. Replaces Rick Fox. We talk about the Hail Mary play in basketball. You're down by three points. You have a free throw with only a couple of seconds to go. You make the first free throw and hope to miss the second and get a two-pointer. That's what North Carolina State did yesterday in order to force the overtime. And if we have a moment, we'll, for those of you who didn't see it, we'll share you. That allowed Jim Galvano to assure himself at least a tie for the ACC title. A Carolina win would move them into first place with rival state. 73-72. It's Monroe that tapped it in. And we're talking about two of the top ten teams in the country out here right now. But surprisingly, North Carolina State is number one in the ACC. May have been Jim Galvano's best coaching job under all the other outside pressure. I hope he forgot about the L.A. Clippers in the NBA. Nice pass. Oh, but he hit the baseline. Out of bounds to Duke. Coming down for the lead. We're on an odd number. Three and a half minutes to go. North Carolina 73. Duke 72. Barry for three. Oh, what a shot. Reed came out on him, and he had to change the trajectory. He used more arc than ever and nails the three. Ooh, a near steal by Kubek. So we've seen two rallies in the second half. Duke early in the half had a seven-point lead, and North Carolina went on a 13-2 run. And then a 26 to 9 run to open a 10 point lead. And Duke comes back and now have a two point advantage. Carolina goes with a tall team to look for some putbacks on the offensive board. Then a 15 to 3 run for Duke. There's the first steal. They'll just play volleyball, that club in there against Duke. They just got too much height, too many wide bodies. They don't want a turnover. They have an advantage if they shoot and miss it. Bucknall up the paint. Oh, and well, it's going to be again the blocking call. Snyder's third. Blocking foul against Lynn Snyder is his third. Boy, this Boy, this, the this interpretation is a, of this rule, hasn't it? A close one. He comes in. Good uh, he's call. In. Excellent call. Thank you. Your, your buddy, line, Froggy, Dick Laparo, makes the call. Two times. And at the line, Bucknall. Dick's assigned to a game. It's a big game. Otherwise, he's not there. Steve Bucknall looking for his 18th point. If successful, we've got a tie game again. <laughs> 247 to go. Snyder for three. Oh, he's hot. That's his third home run of the second half. 78-75, and Quinn Snyder has 15 points. Against trapping defenses, you put three shooting guards out there. Pretty tough to do it. As a push by Madden. 
Boy, look at Barry and Kubek celebrating. And Abdul Nabi, despite the punishment, he's still very much a part of this team. There's Tommy Amaker next to him, an assistant coach. Boy, what a great playmaker he was with the Blue Devils. Well, it's heating up for the NCAA go round. These final two weeks, play intensifying, and the quality of the good teams playing at their best. And of course, the postseason conference tournaments next week. The ACC will have that from Atlanta. Don't forget now. You're going to talk about oh, I, is 21 and 0 when they score 80 points. When they don't score 80 points, they're 0 and 6. Their season record is 21 wins and six losses. So now they have 79 points. If they score this point mathematically by Einstein. That'll be 80, right? Would that be 80? But mathematically by Einstein, they should win. I personally don't know. <laughs> Einstein so what's know. new? Relativ relativity is it? The, re the theory of unknown relativity, yes. That's you, all right. But no! Yes, Eighty to seventy-seven, and Dean Smith is going to use one of his timeouts right here at the two thirteen uh, mark. We enter now into the chess game of coaches, and two of the best in the business: Dean Smith for Carolina, Mike Shishetsky of the Devils. Eight the first free throw, but stayed with a couple of seconds left. Still trail by two. He tries to miss it. The ball goes to Rodney Monroe, and in midair he ties it. The game eventually into four overtimes before North Carolina State assured themselves at least a share of first place. North Carolina trying to move up. At 10 and 4 with a win today. And give Dean Smith his seventh first place finish in the last eight years. Two timeouts left. Carolina has the arrow. Carolina trails Duke 80 to 77. Two minutes, 13 seconds left. Now the full court pressure. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Skip pass. Danny Ferry has a short man Rice on him, and he hits it. He took advantage immediately. Ferry with 24. He is a definite All-American. He may not be player of the year. It's going to be a real battle, but he'll be in the top five on every list. I go inside, outside. Go for the three-pointer. Nope, it's going to go up. Kevin Madden. Oh, he plays that post-up position so well at 6-4. So Madden has eight points, and Dean Smith spends another timeout. He has one left, 1.43 to go. Duke maintains the three-point lead. He's on the mismatch, and then the presence of body. Look, he leans, but he doesn't foul and hits a tough, an NBA shot from the baseline. 82-79, Krzyzewski's Blue Devils with 1.43 to go, and Ferry, another banner day. Don't forget the last time they met was in Cameron in January, and Duke lost 91 to 71. Yeah, but that's a misleading score. Duke actually led with about 10 minutes to go in that game, and it was Carolina finishing well. It was a lot closer than the score would indicate. Come spring, the game was 91 to 71, <laughs> lost by 20 points at Cameron. That's true. <laughs> Close to a five count. Let's see how deliberate they'll, they'll place it. They'll trap if they can on Snyder. Here it comes. Ooh. Spread it out. Keep the clock. Shot clock at 28. We'll keep an eye on that. Game clock 123. Henderson shoots early. And the foul is against North Carolina. Officials have been consistent. Again, it goes against the defender. But no, first third. Both guys stay down to the ground, waiting to see which way the, uh, the ref was going to call it. When it went against Bucknall, he kind of jumped up quick. Surprise, Henderson took the shot so early. He's at the line looking for his 14th point, three for four from the line. Henderson on the line. Dean Smith is five wins away from the great John Wooden, the all-time list. He's the seventh winning his coach is Smith. Need one of these shots now. That's a two-shot foul, obviously. Because then Carolina needs two possessions to win or to tie. That was big. I looked for it. Maybe to go back into the zone. Nope, they're staying man to man. 
Double down on JR. Stays with North Carolina. And a new shot clock, 45 seconds. Not that Carolina's going to waste any time here. Down by four. 108 left. Foul outside before the shot on Kubek. Second on Greg Kubek. Only a sophomore. Oh, this is where these outstanding coaches are really, it's fun to watch them work a game when it gets down to this level. Changing of players, using timeouts. Well, they'll keep a player usually at the score. Steve Buck Nall. Stop the clock. But what Dean was just doing was setting up his defense. If Buck Nall makes the second shot, well, he won't get the second unless he makes the first. It's a one on one. Nall having a game to please Dad uh, Canute and Mom Agatha from London. That's his 21st point. They'll have Danny Ferry take the ball out. I don't think they'll cover Danny Ferry. Oh, missed it. Rebound to Bricky and an instant foul from J.R. Reed. They score 83 80. Ricky, not a good free throw shooter, so that was a wise choice by Reed to foul him. It wasn't by accident. I don't uh, wander away. The matchup between Lopez and Lockridge, that was voted by Ring Magazine the best bout of the year last year. And you'll see the rematch today. They're standing by. This game running a little later than normal. So don't wander away. NBC Sports World has a tremendous boxing 12-round championship fight waiting for you. There's the one out of two. Coach is happy. Ricky now three for seven from the line today. Back in for Team Rice. Madden in for Rice. Sophomore, or the junior rather, Abdul Nadi. Tahir to move the ball down court quickly. If they score, they'll pull their last time out. Ricky, a couple of clutch free throws for a man who normally has his problems at the line. Inside the final minute, Bucknall hits a tough jumper. Timeout, they're going to call. Uh-uh, didn't get it in. Dean's upset. Uh-uh, there's the breakdown. Henderson, wow, what a breakdown that was. Fox for three. Now call the timeout. Wow, they missed it before. They worked on that every day in practice. Oh, my. But even at that, only 10 seconds were lost, and they still are down by only two, thanks to a clutch three from Rick Fox. Our statisticians, Elliot Kalb and Dr. Dennis Enberg, 10 points now for Fox, and Abdul Nabi said, how does he make those shots? How can you win this game without me? Well, we'll see if we can or not. We're talking about the Duke fans. No more timeouts for the Tar Heels. Coach Mike has two left. Yeah, these two teams certainly are candidates to go a long way in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you will give your insights, of course, the day before the finals in your one-hour special, but before it all begins, I know you've hung on Louisville all year long. You, you never change, so I'm not going to ask about Louisville. Give me a dark horse. Who, who might be a team that won't North take Carolina in the Carolina State, if they go with three guards and have good games out of Howard. But on that hour special, Dick, I'm making the eight or nine top players in the country fish. I am. What are you going to be? I'm going to be that French guy with the red wool cap. Cousteau? Yeah. <laughs> You'll enjoy that, it. That's a reach. Well, Ellison's an octopus. Uh, Jerry oh. reads around. Turnover. An invisible foot trips up Barry. And Dean Smith quickly goes to work and gets Kevin Madden in. Timeout, Duke. Oh, my. Danny Ferry, alone on the sidelines, loses his balance and loses possession. Let's see what happens here. Up. Oh. Just stumbled. Boy, you know, that reminds me of playing. I'm going to go way back to 1970 at Oregon State. Defending champion UCLA. And Oregon State.
State had the lead in the ball in a similar situation less than a minute to go. It was Freddie Boyd for Oregon State had the ball and no one around him dribbled off his foot with a one point lead and Sidney Wicks they just counted it down and Wicks went one on one and hit about a 20 footer clean as a whistle and UCLA won that game and went on to win another national championship. That was the Roe Wicks Steve Patterson team. And here it is again a top player Ferry not the, the, quite the importance perhaps but uh, close to it for these fellas because you know if Duke loses today they're on a three game losing streak and uh, they don't have any momentum going into the postseason conference tournament. Now they don't want to give a three point play here. So they should play him backwards if they go out in the three point area. That means to make him take a two shot, two point shot rather than a three point shot. Let it go to overtime. Be no Lock. foul. Shot clock is off. Green has it knocked away. Barry got a piece of that ball. Going to have to foul right away. J.R. Reed with an obvious foul, but they're going to call it one and one. Executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of NBC's basketball, the director of today's telecast, George Finkel. Today's game was produced by Ricky Diamond, our technical director of Marilyn Altman. And thanks to all the men and women who brought you the pictures and sounds from Chapel Hill and the Dean Dome. Duke 87, Carolina 85, and 22 seconds to go, and the pressure on the shoulder of Quinn Snyder. Was in the ACC tournament last year when he won it with a couple of clutch free throws. He calls that his biggest thrill in basketball. Well, he's done more as a senior than he did in his first three years or two. He doesn't have that hesitancy. He's more confident. No timeouts left. Who's going to get it, Reed? I, I Stolen think by Kubek to I, Henderson. I would have backed that one out that time. And with seven seconds to go out of bounds to Duke. In college basketball, what's interesting is not what they do right, it's what they do wrong that makes it exciting. That's right. There's a... A sense of humanity. There's not. They're not perfect. They don't all get tens like so often happens in the NBA. There is that chemistry major play now and then. What? Well, there's another. Leave him alone. Snyder, leave him alone. Wow. Well, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does a basket count or not? No signal. Uh, i will be a two-shot foul, I believe. Okay. Boy, oh boy. The foul is did, on Snyder. Did Quinn Snyder make a mistake there? If that shot would have went in, Dick, they could have won the game here. Three-point play instead with three seconds to go in this heated rivalry. Here's the play. There's the foul. Boy, you're right. And oh, it looked yeah, as if oh. it was going to go in. Just trickled off the brace of the rim. Fox was there, but, of course, that basket not counting. It's King Rice. Well... At the line. I don't root for anyone, but I like this kid, King Rice. How many points has he him. scored today? I don't think he scored any. Zero. I hope for him he makes it because it doesn't win or lose. It puts both teams in the overtime. I just think that this fella needs a, a, a goose, needs some confidence. He's a good free throw shooter, 81%. Not unlike Chris Leitner, the freshman for Duke at the line last week. Ooh, that wasn't put up that, that good. It caught a little bit of that back rim. You can't catch that back rim because you get no breaks off the back rim. Three seconds to go. King Rice with his first point of the game and a big chance at number two. Yep. Ricky rebounds and Duke with one second left is fouled. Fox committed the foul. His fifth. This nice gesture here. That was all over to Fox. King Rice say, good job. You put it up properly. I didn't like the way the first one was taken and it went in. The second one was taken better. This Duke got such a nice pat in the back. Ah, he knew it right away. He knew it right away. See him talk to himself then? He'd only missed nine of 59 prior to that shot. The only time for the sophomore King Rice. Fox goes out with 10 points. One second to go. Carolina will put as many men down as they line. can hope to well they're almost made he misses the shot at just a long throw. Well what, what Danny Furry is to make you throw a trajectory to kill the clock. That means you can't get turned on. If you watch Danny go with the ball, you know he'd almost be better off 
missing the shot. He makes it, allows him the long pass. I think Coach will tell him to miss it. Yes, he's bringing him over now. Here he comes now. He calls yeah, he him over. He says, just catch some iron. Now, if you don't catch iron, it's not going to start. Meanwhile, at the other end, indeed, Krzyzewski talking with Bricky, and now let's see if that was the message he gave Bricky. Got to catch some iron, start that clock, Bricky. Nah, you didn't catch the iron. Right. And Duke scores 80 plus 8 and beats North Carolina 88 to 86. And Chevrolet's most valuable players of the game, J.R. Reed for North Carolina, Quinn Snyder, who's three three-pointers down the clutch, rallied Duke from a 10-point deficit. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and also to assist those in financial need. So these two rivals split. Carolina wins at Duke. Duke wins here at Chapel Hill, 88-86. We'll see you at the ACC next week. Dick and